Hi there, welcome back. I think. I say I think because I don't know whether this video is ever going to see the, the light of day. Uh, and I'll explain why. This is, <laughs> was, is a Bang & Olufsen Bio Center 5000. And this piece of equipment I got from the same donor that provided me the 901 and the set of speakers that I've restored on my channel. Now, with the 901, it turned out to be, well, I wouldn't say boring, but quite simple. It was basically recapping and uh, aligning. And I actually did a video, it turned out a lot more interesting than I thought it would. But with this one, I thought, meh, I'll open it up. It's probably just a fuse or something. Well, it actually wasn't, as you can see. The uh, display was just giving me a couple of dots on there. Nothing else, nothing was working, nothing was reacting. And when that happens, you usually think of something simple like power supply or fuse. So um, this rabbit hole got deeper and deeper and deeper to the point where I've now decided to just record this because it may turn out to be interesting, in which case I'll publish it. The other reason to record is actually my, was my primary reason when I started doing these videos. And that was to get a reference for myself as to what I had done. Because sometimes it's, uh, it's quite difficult to put things back where you got them from and replace them the way you removed them. And these things actually serve as a great reference, this or photos. So what did I find on this thing? Well, that display over there was just giving me the two central dots. And I've searched the web. There's not much available, really not much at all. So maybe this will help somebody else as well. Who knows? But um, the indication was it could be a processor board fault. And this is the processor board. And I've got to tell you, I hate processors on audio equipment. Mixing microprocessors with a piece of audio gear is an aberration. <laughs> I'm offending a lot of people, I'm sure. But um, it just makes it that much more difficult to repair. When you're dealing with digital only, it's fairly straightforward. Usually you throw boards away. But when you're dealing with analog and you suddenly have digital going in there, it does complicate things. It makes the diagnosis and the testing a hell of a lot more difficult. And that's what's happened here. I've got the uh, processor board, or had the processor board, not responding at all. The uh, voltages were there. I checked them. I actually got to the point of uh, replacing the electrolytics because somebody said that could be the problem. Apparently, these things do develop a reset fault, but the reset uh, circuit is working on here. I have the full schematic. It's bloody huge, but you can follow it. So I decided to go ahead and see what I could do. And it's got to the point now where I'm doing things stage by stage, which is the only way to get this thing resolved. Let me explain. This thing has the FM tuner over here, which by my logic should work independently, provided you switch it on. So my idea is to provide all the signals that the processor should provide and see if this thing works. Then of course you've got the uh, turntable record player over there. That one's a little bit more complicated because you've got a certain amount of uh, speed controls, stop-start controls, that the processor does provide. So I'm leaving that for last. And also there's the tape section, which is... I'm not even sure, it's not that one. I think that's, that's the IF, is it? Anyway, there's a tape deck, tape player under there. That also has quite a few instructions. So that'll be left for last. So. I'm going through this in stages, and so far I uh, went one step back and I've decided to start looking at the inputs to the processor board. And one set of inputs are the push buttons at the front, which I actually had dismantled and checked. It's that board over there. There's another set of buttons at the top here. And I'm going to take this one step at a time. And if this turns out to be an interesting project, you'll see the uh, the mounting in reverse, which I presume is the same. The power amplifier and supply are under this magazine. 
obviously put it there so it doesn't short anything out. And I'm going to be following, uh, probably recording bits and pieces now and then, see what comes from this. I must say that I was quite surprised that you can buy that processor. It's an 8048 with um, a one kilobyte, yeah, 1K of RAM, of ROM. So it's uh, one of those really early processors. Yeah, I recall that in my uh, Vasti Final Year thesis, one of the projects I did was uh, I used an 8047, if I'm not mistaken. That too had one kilobytes of ROM. And I remember the it was quite interesting to get the whole thing working, programming the whole thing on 1K. It's like a joke now. It's half a photograph. Not even that. <laughs> but um, yeah, this is looking like a messy cocktail. There's a lot of stuff going on in here. And true to Bang & Olufsen's modus operandi of the time, everything is pretty compact. They did go for form in a big way. They did get the quality right as well. These things were extremely expensive. I recall drooling over them when I was younger. But um, they've also made it extremely easy to at least start the service procedure. Those two sections actually flip up and then they are latched up with these. See that support over there? You literally lift this up and you've got this whole thing available to you. So it's pretty well thought out, which again is one of the reasons this might make an interesting video. We shall see. Okay, let me get on with it and uh, see what we get. Here we have the microprocessor. It's an 8048 with uh, 1K ROM. There aren't the, really that many inputs and outputs on this thing, if they're all shown here, but I did start with the program select section over here. The next page provides us with an instruction, or at least information, telling us what to expect from these three pins. Pin 32, 33, and 34, that's EFG, and it's the program select. So wherever you get the inputs, this thing sends a signal telling you what's been selected. So that goes there, EFG, and it goes along this line. And it goes to this chip, which is an SN7445. And here we have A, B, and C receiving E, E, F, F, G, G. That's pins uh, 13, 14, and 15. And the reason I have that uh, chip off the board and I have those wires in place is I'm providing the binary uh, combination that this thing wants to see to select certain outputs. Now, what else do we have on here? We've got P1, P2, P3, P4, P5, and P6. Now those are different selections for the outputs. P6, I believe, is the free tuning AM. These are all pre-selected FM channels, if I'm not mistaken. We've got tape select, which is uh, pin nine of this chip. And that obviously sends three signals, comes out of there through the 1K resistor, and it goes to this connector, that connector is the same. And there's a direct out over here. We won't worry about where that's going to yet. Phono has the same situation. But this thing here, what I wanted to do is I wanted to activate P6. Okay. So I wanted to see what I needed on here. And in the next page, we get that. You see, we have a function table for that chip. That's IC5. There's 32, 33, and 34. And what it tells us is that for P6, we need 0, 1, 1. So what I did was I got the uh, zero from the ground pin of the microprocessor. It's a plug-in board, so I can just plug in one of those jumpers and connected that to pin 32. I got the one from the supply pin of the processor board and connected that to pin 33 and 34. And what I found was that it actually worked. Because if you look at this over here, this is the truth table for the, uh, the chip we're looking at, the SN7445. And for P6, we've got 0, 1, 1. So I wanted to see whether the output goes high, and it actually did. So I know that I'm on the right track. I've got to take this slowly and see where we get. I'm going to be using these function tables. I'm going to be simulating what the process is doing. 
And something else, I'm really afraid of this thought. I really am afraid of this thought. This microprocessor is a very simple microprocessor by today's standards. And when you've got a truth, ta a truth table like this, you can actually reproduce this with any programmable microprocessor, with anything, like an Arduino. Now, I don't think I want to put an Arduino in there. I could certainly do it. It's fairly easy when you think about it. You know exactly what your inputs are supposed to be, and you know exactly what your outputs are supposed to be. So you can actually do it. But if I do, it'll become... Uh, even more digital with my analog, and, and you know, that gives me uh, heartburn. So that's where I am for now, and I'll keep reporting back if, as things develop, if anything interesting happens. We'll see.